to see the Lord. If somebody wants to see Jesus, they can see Jesus. But there's a law. There's a law for that. The law is obey my commands. You know, and by that, we know who love Jesus. You know, so we can say all day, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. But then when Jesus says, I want you to do this, we don't, we don't do it. So that means that's how we know whether we love him or not. When we deny ourselves, when we, take, when we put ourselves down and then exalt Jesus. When we say, self, I will not follow you. I will follow you, Jesus. You know, so whatever Jesus says, if we do it, then that means we, we love him. And then he says in the Bible, he will show himself to us. But most of us in the church are not having those in encounters. Most of us. The majority of us. All of us probably. Most of us, the majority, do not have encounters with Jesus. We have not seen him. You know, you know. So that means, do we know him then? Do we know him? Because he says he will show himself. He will show himself to us. You know, he will show himself to us. You know, so, so, so he's saying that we have to obey. You know, so that tells you, that can tell you where you at as a Christian. You know, a lot of times we can be Christian, but we're not having encounters. In other words, we haven't make, we haven't done anything to actually get God's attention. Or we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Like the Bible says, if you want to find the Lord, you have to seek him with all your heart. If you want to find God, you're going to have to seek him with all your heart. That's why when you go to the book of Joel, chapter 2, you go to the book of Joel, you find that part of seeking God with all your heart is fasting. When you begin to mourn, you know, you begin to fast, you begin to afflict yourself and do what Jesus say, you know, then, you, then the Lord starts to say, oh, you're serious. You know, but not many of us is really serious. We, a lot of us, we spend more time following people. Then we, then we do following Jesus. Then we do, you know, then we do like taking God's word into, 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 to heart, you know, and, and, and really study his word and take it to heart and be like, okay, um, Jesus says this, Jesus says this, Jesus says this, you know. It is possible for every man to worship Jesus. It is possible for every man to actually begin to work on their salvation, to work on themselves, to see if really, really, that what Jesus says in the Bible is that putting everything into practice. It is possible to do that. But we have to work on it. We have to work on it and we have to go to the scriptures and say, okay, which one am I not doing? Which one am I doing? Which one do I need to work on? And then at the same time, asking God to help us, asking God for his Holy Spirit to help us because that's the whole point of the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons why God sent us his Spirit is to help us in our weaknesses. To give us the strength to overcome our sinful nature, to overcome the loss of the flesh. Because the Spirit, the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Holy Spirit, if he's, when he's in us, he's greater than the world. He's greater. The Holy Spirit overcomes sin. The Holy Spirit overcomes death. You know, he rose, Je he rose, Jesus, he, he, he rose Jesus from the dead. He raised Jesus from the dead. You know, so the Holy Spirit is greater than death. You know, he's greater than sin. He's greater than Satan. He's greater than he that's in the world. So when we receive his, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit translates into the power of God, the power uh, to overcome sin, the power to walk with God. That's why as Christians, we have to make sure that we live a life of prayer, prayer and fasting where, where the Lord can continually Ten our lamp, where he can continually fill our lamp with oil. You know, because the oil is the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that allows us, allows us to walk like Jesus did, that allows us to obey also. We need help to, to walk, to, to obey God's word. And that help comes from the Holy Ghost. But first, we must repent. We must acknowledge that we have fallen short of the glory of God. We must acknowledge our sins and ask God to forgive us. And then turn away from them. And then when we do that and, and we get baptized, then that tells God that we're ready. We're ready to receive his Holy Spirit so he can help us, so he can anoint us, so he can seal us for the day of redemption, so he can seal us with his Holy Spirit for the day of rapture. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins 
then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, first it starts with repentance, turning away from sin, acknowledging that we're sinners, confessing our sins to Jesus. Lord, forgive me for my sin. Have mercy on me, a sinner. You know, and then you tell God your sins, and then you let, and you say, Lord, even those sins I didn't know I committed, please forgive me for them too. Forgive me for all my sins, Father God, and cleanse me from all sin and from all unrighteousness. And then after you repent and you begin to pray and ask God to fill you with His Spirit, you begin to ask God to anoint you with His Holy Spirit. You begin to ask God to baptize you with His Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the power of God. You know, the power of God that has come upon you to help you, to enable you to live this Christian life you know, this Christian life, which we cannot do without Jesus, which we cannot do without the Holy Ghost, you see. So when the Holy Spirit come upon you, it's power that you will receive. And that's what we read in the book of Acts. So we, the church cannot live without the power of God, without the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit enables us to do those things that we could not do. That's why uh, um, in the book of Mark 10, 27, the Bible says, when the rich young ruler came to Jesus to ask, what must he do to be saved? And he began to talk about his righteousness, how he was obeying this, how he was doing this, how he was doing this. But when it was, when it was all said and done, he fell short. There's something he wasn't doing. So now, Jesus said, there was one more thing that you lack. Go and sell all of your possessions and give to the poor. And the young man was shocked because he had great possessions. So he left. He, he, he walked away. He walked away from Christ. He left. Because he was not willing to give up his possession. There was one thing he was not willing to do for Jesus. There was one thing he was not willing to do for God. Then Jesus turned and looked at the disciples and said, Children, children, I tell you the truth. How hard it is for a rich men to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for, the, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich men to enter the kingdom of God. Now the disciples was also shocked <laughs> because for them the righteousness probably of the young man was righteous enough. Because remember, the way men look at righteousness is not the same way that God looks at righteousness. For us, we can be like, oh, this guy is a good guy. This man is a good man. You know, you know, he does this, he does that. But then in the eyes of the Lord, you know, he's gonna because his because God. He, he, it is his righteousness that is righteousness, not our righteousness. Our righteousness is not the true righteousness. The, the righteousness is the true righteousness is the righteousness of God, and that righteousness of God comes from not us; it comes from Him. So, if we want to be saved, we need His righteousness. In other words, we need His help, and this righteousness comes from where? It comes from His Holy Spirit. You know. So that's why he says in the Bible, Jesus didn't tell them how a man would be saved because the disciples were there, were like, they were so shocked. They were so shocked. You know, uh, when Jesus said, you know, uh, what he said about the, uh, the, the rich man. And then they, then they said to Jesus, then who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Then, then Jesus told them, with man it's impossible. In other words, you with your own power, you can't save yourself. Because you are not the Savior. You are not God. You know, that means you, you need God. That means you need Jesus. You need God's intervention in your life. You need help. You need the Holy Ghost to be in you. You need God to dwell in you. You need to receive God to walk like Him, to live like Him. You need to have Him in you. You need to have Him in your life. You need His help. You need His helping hand. You know, without Him, it's going to be your righteousness. It's going to be your strength. And you're going to be falling short. You know? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but are justified freely by His grace that came to the redemption of Jesus Christ. So it's by grace. It's through Jesus. It's, it's by faith in God. Through Jesus, will you receive the power? Will you receive the Holy Ghost? Will you receive the strength to do those things that Jesus asked you to do that you were weak, that you had weak, that you were weak on? And so Jesus says, the answer to this when they say, who then can be saved? You know, then what did, the, what did Jesus says? With man, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, salvation is only made by, possible by God. Salvation is not made possible by no one, by no man. But it's made possible by God. God himself 
has to help you. That means you need to seek God's help. That means you need to seek His Spirit because it's, it's not until you receive His Spirit that you receive the strength and the power to overcome sin. You see? So, 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 um, I can prove that to you in the book of Romans. The book of Romans talks about the Holy Ghost, talks about the Holy Spirit, how a man can either have the, a carnal mind or, or, or the mind of the Spirit. And the men that have the carnal mind cannot please God because he's not subjected to God's laws. He can't obey. He struggles with obedience because his mind is carnal. But a man of the Spirit, a man that has the Holy Ghost living in them, is not doesn't have a carnal mind. They don't have a carnal mind because they have the mind of the Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives in them. And the Bible says they are not in the flesh because of that. Because the Holy Spirit lives in them, they're not in the flesh. They're in the realm of the Spirit if it be that the Spirit is in them. And then it says, if the Spirit is in you, then, then, then you are not in the flesh but in the realm of the Spirit. So it makes it possible for them to obey God because they don't have a carnal mind. They have the mind of Christ. And it goes on to say, oh, if a man doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, then he doesn't belong to Christ. In other words, if a man doesn't have God's Spirit living in them, the Holy Spirit living in them, then they're not subjected to God's laws. They can't obey God. They can't obey God. In other words, they need the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of them to be able to, to obey Jesus. You know, in other words, until, except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Except a man receive God's Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus meant when he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see heaven. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That's what the Bible tells you in the book of Romans chapter 14 verse 6. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, how do you get to the kingdom of God? How do you make it to the kingdom of God? How do you see the kingdom of God? The Holy Ghost. It's by the Holy Ghost. Because they, first is the scripture says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. In other words, if you want to know the kingdom of God, if you want to find the kingdom of God, if you want to arrive at the, to the kingdom of God and make it to heaven, then there's something that you need. And the, the scripture tells you exactly what it is. Because it isn't that same thing that you need, that's where you find the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of joy, peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. See? In the Holy Spirit. So, where's the kingdom of God? In the Holy Spirit. So, when somebody has the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom is within you. That's what Jesus meant when he said, uh, 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 the kingdom of God does not come by men's observations. When they're saying, here it is, they're not, going to, they're not going to be saying, here it is, or there it is. Jesus says, no, the kingdom of God is within you. In other words, the Holy Ghost. We all know we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And He dwells inside of us. He lives inside of us. You know, you find that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, that the church is the temple of the living God. The church is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The church is the house of the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit lives in the house, lives in the church. He lives in the temple. He lives in the body. We the body. We the temple. That's why the Bible tells you we the body of Christ because Christ lives inside of us. We the body of Christ because Christ lives inside of us. We are the temple of God. So that's what makes us that's what that's what makes us a part of Christ, a, body, a, a part of Christ. We are in His kingdom because of His Holy Spirit that dwells in us. We are the body of Christ because we are His temple. We are the temple of Jesus. We are the temple of Christ because Christ lives in us. You know, the Holy Ghost. Christ lives in us through the Spirit, through His Spirit, through the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. You see? That's why there will be a resurrection for those that believe in Christ and obey Christ. On the day of, of the rapture, there will be a resurrection for them because when they die, their life, they, when they die, they, they died physically, but because they had the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, they were in Christ. Christ was in them, and them, and they themselves were in Christ. We have to be in, uh, we, uh, Christ have to be in us for us to be in Christ, you know? So we have to have the Spirit. We have to have the Spirit. You know, to be able to overcome this world. 
You see, to be able to overcome sin, we have to have His Holy Ghost. And the Bible uh, tells us that the Holy Spirit is a promise for all of us. It's a promise to all who believe. But of course, we must remember, we have to repent. We have to repent. We can't just keep living in sin, you know. We can't just keep living in sin, you know, and, and, and asking God, you know, for uh, we can ask God for the Holy Spirit, but we cannot deceive ourselves. You know, because the Bible says we got to repent. You know, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the message. That's what they tell us to do. That's what the Word of God tells us. For us to receive His Spirit by faith is we have to repent. By faith in, in the Word. By faith in what the Word says. By faith in God. We have to repent. Repent. Acknowledge our sins. Ask God for forgiveness and turn away from them. You know, and get baptized. And then, the Bible says, then, then, the Bible says, after you do that, then you're forgiven. God forgives you, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, and then when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then our life is going to change. Our life is going to change. You know, when the Holy Spirit dwells in us, then that's a game changer. That's a life changer. You know, because now we have the power of God living in us. The Holy Spirit living in us is also the power of God. And I can show you that in the book of Acts chapter 1. When the Holy Spirit come upon somebody, they have received power. But it's up to them to stir up the anointing that is in them. To stir up the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know. So the book of Acts chapter 1. The book of Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. Verse 8. Let us... Let us begin with verse 7. The Lord Jesus said to them, He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power. You see, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So why is the church powerless? Why are so many of us in the church powerless? Not every church, of course, and not everybody, but the majority. <laughs> Why is the church powerless? You go to this church, you go to that church, powerless. You know, powerless, all over the place, powerless, powerless. You know, why is that? You know, if somebody's sick, you know, you, sometimes you can find one person in, in that church to pray for that person to be healed. Why are we like that? Why? The Bible tells you. That the Bible tells you, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power, you see? But you will receive power, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses, you see? So, that power, that, that you see, manifesting, people getting healed from, uh, from, from, from those, from, from, from the believers, from some of the believers in the body of Christ, that power comes from the Holy Ghost. It comes from the Holy Spirit that dwells in them. See, the Holy Spirit that dwells in them. Because Jesus says, when you, the Holy Spirit come upon you, we receive power. But many people don't seek. Sometimes they're in church. They don't seek. They don't seek the Holy Ghost. You know? They don't seek the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and you can see what the Bible tells you. There's a, there's a place in the Bible where the people became believers. They even got baptized. But still... Did not receive the power. They still did not receive the Holy Ghost. They did not receive the Holy Ghost. You know? And they had to pray for them. So that tells you it's not something that's automatic. It doesn't automatically happen that you receive the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't automatically happen when you become a Christian. That's why you can become a Christian and unless you seek the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you can be powerless for a long time as a Christian. You can spend many years in church, doing a lot of things, a lot of good things in church, and still don't receive the power. Because the power is, 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 comes from the Holy Ghost. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. That's who's doing the work. When people are being healed, when people are being delivered from Satan, when miracles are taking place, you know, it's the Holy Ghost doing those things. It's the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. But when you receive the Holy Ghost, He can manifest. He can manifest through speaking in tongues, 
through prophesying, you know, different ways you can you can manifest that way. But it doesn't mean that at that very moment when you receive the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're gonna have uh, um you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be uh, uh, praying for sick people. They're gonna be healed. It doesn't mean that's going to happen automatically. It might not happen that way. Because the Bible tells us that, you know, it's not all of us, you know, that have the gift of healing. It's not all of us that have this other gift. You know, it's up to you. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is actually the power of God living in you also. The Spirit of God is living in you. And He's the one that has the power. Everything that God does is by His Spirit. So really, the Holy Spirit is also... Uh, uh, God's power also. So when the Holy Spirit is in you, the power is already in you. But you have to fend it into flame. You have to fend that into flame, and that's in the Bible also. You know, uh, uh, when when Paul had deposited something good in, into Timothy, which was the Holy Ghost, then he told he, he then he he uh, he counseled Timothy to fend into flame the gift of God that was that was given unto him by the laying of hands by him laying hands on on timothy he told timothy to fan into flame the gift of god that's in him and that gift is fan into prayer even when you receive the holy ghost you know you still gotta pray you know so god can stir up the power that's in you so that god can stir up the anointing that's in you how do i know that we have power in us when we receive the holy spirit one I just read, I just showed you in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but when you receive the Holy Spirit, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. The other scripture that shows us that we have power inside of us, because of the Holy Spirit that is in us, is found in the book of Ephesians. You will find that in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. So the church, when they receive the Holy Spirit, they have power, but sometimes they don't know they have power. So then they don't they don't fan it into flame. They don't pray so that can be so that power can be activated, you know. So then they'll have the power in them and walk and walk powerless, you know. So Ephesians chapter six. This is what it says. Uh, Ephesians chapter six. Let me see. Is it Ephesians chapter six or is it Ephesians chapter three? Uh, oh, Ephesians chapter three. Verse. All right, it's somewhere here. Okay, I found it by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, verse 20. This is what it says. To show you that we have power in us as Christians, we're supposed to have power in us, you know, because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, we have power. So the scripture says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. You see, he's saying to him, that means to God Almighty, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. You know, that's what he means by saying. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or even imagine. According, and the way he does these things, he do, he do, um, he, he does, he, he does more than we ask for. He can do more than we ask for to the point where we can even measure how much he can do for us. He can do more than we even ask for. And even imagine, and even thought about, it, or even ever fathom. And the way he does it is according, the scripture says, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You see, throughout all generations, this power is available for all of us once we receive the Holy Ghost. But many people have not tapped into it. You know, many people have not touched that power. You know, they receive, some of us have not even received, you know, in the body of Christ. Some of us have not even received the Holy Spirit, you know, you know the way we read in the scriptures. Some of us haven't even received, because you find in the scriptures, there are believers that did not have the Spirit. We find that in the Bible. 
we find that there's people that did not receive, you know, the Holy Ghost. You know, we find that that's in Scripture. You know, so the Scripture says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. You see, the power that is at work within us. What is that power that is at work within us? It's the Holy Ghost. Because he says, you will receive power when the Spirit has come upon you, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So it's by the Holy Spirit you, uh, that is in you, then you have, the, you have power. Through that power that's in you, through the Holy Spirit that's in you, you know, then God can do more than, that, more than what you ask for, and even immeasurably above what you ask for, you know, and to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So it's not, the glory doesn't go to us, you know, it's not us, you know, it's the glory go to God. That's why in verse 21 he says, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, it's not us doing the work, it's the Holy Spirit in us doing the work. It's the power of God in us doing the work. So when you, when somebody have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost dwells in them, then they have the power in them. The power of God is in them. And now when they begin to use that power that is in them, who's the one doing the work? It's the Father doing the work to his sons, to his daughters. It's the Father doing the work. You know, it's the Holy Ghost doing the work. You see? So that's why you read here after he says, not to him who's able to do immeasurably more, then all we ask or imagine, according to this power that is at work within us, the next thing you hear is, to him be glory. You know, we give God the glory. You see? You know, we give God the glory because he's actually the one doing the work. It's the finger of God. It's the Holy Spirit. So, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So, so you can see that um, I have come to the conclusion of today's message and uh, may you be blessed may you understand um, the words that was preached today may you understand also that you have to put your faith in this in the Bible put your faith in the Bible you know put your faith in the Word of God trust the Word of God more than you trust uh, preachers or people preaching the gospel because sometimes they can make mistakes sometimes later on they might realize that they make a mistake whether they say it or not you know but sometimes people make mistakes sometimes they they teach false doctrine but you will not know unless you have the bible unless you already know the bible you already read this word for yourself and you already have the anointing you have to have the anointing also of the holy spirit to guide you to lead you into all truth, to teach you also, even when you're being taught by somebody, you're supposed to have the Holy Ghost at the same time. Apostle Paul was teaching the church back then, and yet he was telling them something. Let me show you in the book of First John. I thought I came to the conclusion of today's message, but some, but this came up. First John, First John, the book of First John show you. Even though Paul was teaching the people there, this is what he told them. Even though he was teaching them the word, this is what he told them. He was giving them the word, but look what he says to them. This is what he says. First John. See, first John verse 26 through verse 27. And look what look what Paul is saying, which is also the word of God. I am writing these things to you, the very word that we read in the Bible. He says, I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. In other words, those who are trying to deceive you. As for you, you see, as for you, the anointing you receive from Him, the anointing you receive from God, the anointing you receive from Jesus, as for you, which is the Holy Ghost, as for you, the anointing you receive from Him remains in you. And you do not need because the anointing remains in you, because the Holy Spirit is in you, you do not need. It says, and you do not need, and you do not need, and you do not need anyone to teach you. 
See, when you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the scripture says you do not need anyone to teach you. Even though Paul was writing to them, you know, he was writing to them, he was teaching them, he was trying to show them something, you know, so they're not deceived. But he still let them know, hey, remember, you know the truth. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will lead you all into all truth. You know, he teaches you. Remember who you remember you you received the anointing. Remember you received the Holy Ghost. It's not everybody that received that anointing. But when I say that that anointing means not everybody, because you read in the scripture, some people they came to Christ but did not receive the, the Holy Ghost until they came and prayed for them. You know? But some people receive it in the church today. It's not everybody that 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 receive <laughs> that, that the, the Holy Ghost. It's not everybody. That's why we gotta make sure we have the Holy Ghost. You see, because until you have the Holy Ghost, you don't have that anointing that can teach you. You know, the anointing that can teach you the word of God, that can teach you the truth. So that means you're open for deception. You know, but he was, even though he was showing them something, even though he was showing them something, he was teaching them something, he was still showing them, hey, don't forget. Don't be deceived. Don't forget. You have the Holy Ghost. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit who can teach you. You don't need that someone teach you the word. You have the anointing that teaches you, which is the Holy Ghost. So be careful. Be careful. Be careful. You know, when people are coming with false doctrine, you know, establishing doctrines that are like not even Bible, like going against the word, you know, and then when you read the word, you see what they're saying is not, is not even lining up. Be careful with those people. Be careful with anybody, you know, that's preaching the word. Make sure they're lining up with the, with the Bible and make sure and remember that the anointing that you have, if you have the anointing, because we're supposed to be anointed. We're supposed to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us it's a promise. It's for all of us. It's the promise. The promise is the, of the Holy Spirit is for all of us. That, mean, that means we have to make sure we receive it, you know, because it's not on, until we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, you know, then certain things begin to happen. You no, know, it's not until we receive the promise to receive the power. Through the promise of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, then we can overcome sin. You see, we can overcome sin through the Holy Spirit that dwells in us.